Hey, it's Scott here with ATX Bourbon with another blind tasting video. This time we're back in front of the whiskey shelf. The tasting off the barrel just didn't really work. The ergonomics weren't great. I've got a, a new chair. Hopefully it doesn't squeak. I tried doing a little pre-recording just to mess around and see if I could get the squeak. You know, it seemed pretty safe. Um, this is going to be a long one. We're tasting through five offerings from Joseph Magnus, um, three of their cigar blends. So that's going to be batch eight, which my uh, brother was able to get for me in Granbury, Texas. Uh, batch 12, which I was able to get here at Oak Liquor Cabinet, and Batch 13, which a um, fellow Austin Bourbon Hunter was able to pick up for me in Chicago on a business trip. So I was able to kind of acquire a few of those. I'm pretty excited about that. Then we're going to have the regular just Joseph Magnus release off the shelf, and then um, Oak Liquor Cabinet's uh, single barrel selection, which is a 12 and a half year MGP um, source juice. And then we're going to be tasting off of a uh, new fancy little barrel stave that I got myself as a Prime Day present, and then uh. using Kind of that same method with the little glass bottles with post-it notes. Cool. All right. So, um, yeah, we got a lot to taste, so we're just going to dive right in. All right. Let's see. That would be a spicy start. Okay, no, that's good. So, um... <laughs> The nose on that one didn't really didn't really have a lot of the notes I was expecting from a finished bourbon, but kind of as I got in there, particularly in the finish, got some more of those kind of cognac notes that I would expect from uh, both the regular Magnus and the um, Cigar Blend releases. Um, that's good bourbon, no way around that. Uh, let's uh, let's taste a few of these other ones and see if we can see if um, there's a difference. Second up is our orange uh, label. It's definitely a richer nose. Um, that's really nice. Like kind of the sherry and the cognac kind of come through with the bourbon notes there. Yeah, that's really good. So you get a lot on the finish there. Um, really heavy, like notes of the finish. A lot of like a combination of kind of the caramel and vanilla and warm spice and leather. I would get from um, some MGP bourbons, some herbs, and then. Uh, kind of cognac and sherry notes that you would expect from something finished in those. I don't really know what Armagnac tastes like. That's the other finishing barrel they use. Um, I should probably taste some and figure it out, but we'll get there when we get there. Um, early on, I'm going to guess that's a cigar blend batch. The uh, the strong finishes were one of the big things that kind of stood out to me with those, and then um, that pairs really nicely with smoking a cigar. That's kind of where it goes in there. That uh, the really long, sweet finish kind of goes really well with that. Next up is yellow. Hmm. This one also doesn't have a very heavy like finish on the nose. I don't get a lot of um, sherry or cognac there. Very herbal. So I'm thinking this might be, let's taste it. I don't want to say anything stupid. Okay, so either that's the um, that's the plain MGP or that's the regular release, which isn't, in my opinion, finished as heavy. So um, I'm thinking that we're down to, uh, yeah. Yellow and red are probably going to be the ones that aren't the cigar blends, but I'm not 100% on that yet. Let's jump in with the blue here. Wow, that's really good. Um, there's like some rich free notes in the middle. The finish is still going on as I'm talking to you. I think the nose might have been a little better on orange. We'll go back and do those side by side, but so far... Um, so far, this is looking like our guy, but let's not. Let's give green a fair shake. So we've got the green. Okay, the green is um definitely spicier than the uh, the blue, like in a good way. But um, more of a sweet guy, as is a uh, regular viewers will know. <laughs> So let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and um, grab that yellow and that red, as I think that those aren't the cigar blends. Taste them again. And see if we can knock them out of the contention. On the nose, it's really hard to tell. I'm not getting a ton of difference here. I feel like I do get that sherry and the cognac on the finish here, though. Or I feel like this one has more kind of those um, herbal notes I would expect from just uh, plain old, good old MGP. So let's um, let's go with yellow being the oak liquor cabinet pick. Uh, the, 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 sorry, this tape is sticky. Hey, we did it, Red. 
or Instagram, I guess. Cool. So um, we knocked that one out. Really, it was the finish that was the giveaway for me on that. Um, in my opinion, a lot of the strength of those cognac and sherry um, finish barrel finishes is that they impart like this long, sweet, rich finish with like those kind of cognac grape notes and then those like dark fruit sherry notes that kind of just last in your mouth. And um, that just didn't have that. That leaves the red, which we're gonna go ahead and predict is just the regular Joseph Magnus release. Great bourbon, um, honestly a little pricey for what it is. Oh, that lid is not, not all the way shut, that's spicy. And yes, the M, just Magnus. Okay, cool, so that's good. We've knocked those out of the running. So let's see, I think blue was my favorite, but let's, let's taste them all one more time to be sure. So I'm getting some like sherry notes on the nose on this one that I might expect from like a heavily sherry scotch. You can think of like a Glen Farkless or something like that. Sweet, herbal in the middle, very nice. Um, the cognac comes through more on the finish, more sherry on the finish. Um, long, great finish. Um, this one's good. Uh, I don't think it's the 12. The 12 was the one I really liked in the um, the non-blind tasting, so given my track record on some of these, that's probably the 12, but I'm gonna guess that's, not, that's either the, uh, the eight or the 13, which I thought were pretty comparable um, quality-wise. Oh yeah, um, I get a lot of cognac on the nose. So it's like some of my favorite bourbon notes. You got brown sugar, you got vanilla, and then you got like these rich cognac notes. It's like a really great um, kind of marriage there. And then yeah, percent get like more brown sugar, dark fruit, cherry, like that kind of thing on the palate, and then on the finish, like warm, sweet, spicy, all kind of the same time, like a fruit, like a Christmas fruit pie or something, like a good one, not like a frozen store one. That's really good. Um, I don't think the green's gonna beat that out, but we'll give it a shake. This one's the most bourbony on the nose. I think some people might prefer that. Um, yeah, it's good still. Very MGP-esque nose. Um, there's just a little something extra there. That, but uh, yeah, I think on the, if I was just nosing these, I would have had a hard pick, hard time picking this out as one of the cigar blends. Interesting on that one, I kind of get like the cognac and sherry notes the most on the actual palate. And then, wow, on the finish too. The finish goes on for days on that. Um, spicier though. Like, good. Spicy is good sometimes, but, uh, yeah. Okay, so for me, blue is going to win out the day. That's our number one gold medal here. Um, we'll see if my, like, non-blind tastes are validated or not. We did it. Batch 12. Um, I don't know how I'm going to guess between these other two. Um, one of them's eight and one of them's 13. They're both really good. Um... I think, you know, given that I've heard a lot of people say that the older batches are better, the, the spicier, more classic bourbon one is probably going to be that, just because that's, you know, the folks that, like, say the old bourbon is better usually have those kind of tastes in my experience. Um, blind guess here. Oh, I just drank the blue again. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah. Green, batch... Uh, we're going to give green the second place medal as well. The spiciness is really nice and stands out more than the orange does. Batch 8, I can sort of handwrite an 8. And that means our last one was batch 13. So uh, I haven't had many of the other batches. I'm trying to line up a couple of sample swaps to uh, see if I can try a few other things. But I definitely think the three cigar blends stood out above the regular Magnus. They are pricey. There's just no way around it. They're hard to find. Um, you know, it's always hard to say if these kind of things are worth it. Is it worth chasing one of these around and paying 180 bucks for it? I don't know. But comparing it to some other like top shelf bourbon in a world where some of them little old scout years are going to be over $200 on secondary now and impossible to find that. I'm going to say to me that yes, being able to get these at retail is totally, or at least close. <laughs> um, totally worth it. Huge fan. I do think the batch 12 kind of stands above the rest. Um, when I do the written scored review, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a contender for like a 10 point score, which would put it up there with um, some of my personal favorites of Older Van Winkle and then that High West uh, Ronda B. Rye finished for four years and seven months in Quaid Port Casks. <laughs> I'll never forget that one. 
So great. Hey, thanks again for tuning in. We clocked in at right around 10 minutes and this is my longest video yet. So <laughs> thanks for sticking with me. Um, we'll be back with some more blind tastings and um, probably not any other video content yet. So I don't know what I would do. So thanks guys. Have a great night.